Puts Gloves here, and this is the fifth video in the Harmer from the Ground Up tutorial series. And today, we are going to be talking about the FX volume and envelope, as well as several velocity settings. Now, these are really cool. They're also very important to understand. So, let's get right to it. So, oh, and we're also going to be talking about these guys right here. Because they are important for what we're going to be talking about with these velocity settings today. So, we have this FX slider. Right now, the effects are are coming all the way through. So if we go to our effects, turn your reverb on, like so. And it's in these four tabs. That's where the FX is. And to turn it on, you just hit that. And uh, just leave it. We're not going to talk about reverb. Just so you know, now there's reverb. But if you move this in either direction, up or down, you will take the reverb out. So if you turn it down, it's dry. Push it up, it's dry. But as we move it in... Our reverb comes back. So we're going to turn our reverb off. Just showing you what that does. We have our volume. It does exactly what you think it does. It creates our volume. Now these things could go down. And I don't totally understand the uh, what this is for. Why go down to it? I don't know if it like reverses it or something. I don't know. But it's your volume. So that zero is, is zero. So there's no volume and then lastly you have an envelope um, so this basically says how effective your envelope is on your sound and so right now we've got this volume envelope and as you can see it's set to envelope mode and I we're gonna really quick talk about this so this is an ADSR envelope however you could do a lot of things to it um, pretty standard morphing envelope or I guess you wouldn't call it, I don't know what the official term is, so I call it a morphing envelope. But anyways, you turn it on by clicking this button down here. And what it does is, uh, right now it will follow our curve. So it'll turn on and you'll actually see a line move across, which is so helpful for visual things. But it'll move across and you can drag and move these points. And so our attack time will come in and then it will decay till it reaches this level, which is the sustain level. And it will hang out at this level as long as you have your note held down. And then it will release out. When you let go of the note, this is the volume curve it'll follow. So this can, so this right now is telling our volume how to behave. But it can tell other parameters how to behave just as well. You could use it on envelopes. You could use it on pretty much anything. But right now, it's directly linked to the volume. But how effective this envelope is at doing its job is related to the envelope tab. So if we first, let's play a key and show you how this envelope works. And as you can see, the line just, it's great. Like, super simple. Now, you have these attacks, decay, sustain, release. These are interesting. Um, I'm not totally sure what the heck was the deal with these guys. But you can move them, and they'll move... And but they'll snap back to where they were before but now they're relative to that so you get like in between mixes so if we take it all the way up it's like it's skipping straight to the decay like it still the line still shows where it's at but it skips straight to the decay and if you turn it back down now you might be wondering well at least i was wondering just a little bit ago but i think i actually have some understanding of why they did this because you do that for everything you do that for the decay why would you want things to look like they actually aren't? Well, the reason is we've got these. I'm going to cover envelopes more at a later date. So there's because there's a bunch of extra menus and things. But the reason is you have these attack time. You have these time settings relative to your envelope. And we're going to talk about that. But uh, first, let's really quick go back to our envelope. So you do that. You see me go through all these envelopes. This first one is your envelope menus, and you see the volume. And if we've affected it, it has a little triangle next to it, which we've been touching that one. So it's not the way it was by default. So it's got a triangle next to it. And as you see, if we turn our envelope effectiveness down, there's no volume because the envelope isn't affecting. And because our envelope's on, it's not telling the volume how to behave. And thus, no volume ever comes out because it's at a level of zero. But, uh, or just no level. And so if we were to turn it up, it's now obeying our whims. If we turn all the way up, it gets substantially louder. So that's what that, now this one seems to make sense. This one starts at zero and goes all the way up. So I'm convinced there has to be a reason these are go down. Uh, now this auto, it's auto gain. I have no idea what that means. Um, if you know, if you know what the auto knob, there's literally two words, auto gain. I don't know. I don't know. So, if you know, drop it in the comments. Velocity. 
And so these this links. Okay, so to do this, you need either a keyboard with velocity sensitivity, which means when you hit the key, you have varying levels of loudness you get. So if you hit it harder, it turns louder. If you hit it softer, it's softer, that type of deal. But I have done it in the piano roll. Just put down some notes and change their velocity settings below. FL, I have an FL12 video series. So I'm making your first song if you don't know how to do that. And uh, so what these things do is these change the way it interprets the envelope. So we have to have our envelope on according to our velocity. So this first one is actually, you can see it's got the attack line on it and it changes on where, you, however loud you hit it will change where it starts on the attack phase. So it may start right here or it could start right here. So it totally depends. Uh, oh, it should be noted also on this volume envelope that the scale is now time. Ver uh, the X scale is time and the Y scale is uh, how loud so the controllers ability to turn on and off I believe if you if you have a controller like frequency that could go not frequency you know what never mind so here we go we're gonna play our notes now and now that we have our attack on the louder notes will start closer to the attack phase than the softer notes and as you can see that's totally the case so you, that's that's really actually a pretty cool thing to have for when you're creating maybe some interesting um, pluck sounds or something like you just want variable texture at the beginning of your sound. You could use this and you could still have pluck, but you could still have also some of the original um, non-plucked sound. So that's pretty cool. Then you also have, you could do that same thing for the, I believe this is, this is the attack phase itself. How, it's just how fast it moves through the envelope. So rather than just starting in a different place, this one is how fast. So the louder it is, the faster it moves through your attack phase. The softer it is, the slower it moves through your attack phase. So you see the slow ones are just barely making it, but the loud ones, even though they're the same length, are going all the way through the attack phase. So And then this last one uh, has a release. So when you release... Uh, how the release behaves, how loud it, the velocity of your release. So now the thing about this is these three knobs are connected. So if we turn them all, if we turn them both on, it's kind of weird because of what we now know these two do, but you can have them both on at the same time. I don't know, weirdness. Now you have these global attack envelope times. And the reason I'm talking about them here is because these link I believe they do anyways. These link your settings to the global volume over here. And it's just, let's just get these out of the way now. I know I haven't covered these volume knobs in specific, but they're pretty self-explanatory. It's the envelopes that are confusing. So once you have your envelope on and you turn this on, so you've now linked the envelope attack phase to the global envelope attack time so i in your velocity so however loud it is you know starts later in your it's closer to the attack phase or the decay phase of your envelope i really hope i'm not confusing you see this is the thing about harmer is you just got to kind of have a really solid grasp on some things to understand them so now that we've got that figured out this will on so this represents your keyboard essentially okay so each one of these represents a note and I'm pretty sure the white and black, well, I guess it's just every other two, one, two. Oh, no, this is a keyboard mapping. So here's your C, C sharp, D, D sharp. See, these are your black keys. And then E, F. So these are your natural half steps. F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, which is your other natural half step. And it repeats. And so these are your key, this is your keyboard. And I'm not sure how many octaves, well, it looks like they have nine octaves available to us on this setting. And you could tell a uh, specific note. So that's the note I'm hitting. And you could tell specific notes exactly how to behave according to this. So let's say we want this one note in particular to be all the way uh, on the attack phase. But if let's say we wanted to have to... Uh, zoom through the attack phase. So I hope I hope you get what I'm doing. I'm manipulating this setting. I'm changing it. I'm telling it well, on this particular note, I want you, regardless of what velocity says, to sweep in from the beginning. Or I could say on this particular note, I want you, regardless of if I'm playing it soft or loud, to 
sweep in um, from the uh, decay. So completely skip the attack phase, go straight to the pluck. But as we get farther out, the velocity becomes more relative. And now the velocity over here, for example, is completely relative. As you can see, it's relative to that. But you could change that. So you could say like that. And so you could set these patterns of motion across your keyboard, which could be very cool or very, you know, not cool. It's totally up to you. So after this, you could do that for the attack time scale, how fast it moves through the attack. So right now, it will listen to our velocity all, all the way if we turn our attack time scale on. But if we turn it down, it will not. It'll just go straight to the attack phase, completely skipping the rest of the note. And in the middle, it just goes faster through that phase. So you could set that up. Uh, I think I've pretty much explained it now. So you could do the decay. And you could change how fast it moves through the decay and whatnot. You could change it for the sustain. Now, the sustain's got a middle ground. So, it can go back to zero. And if you turn all the way on, it stays at zero. But it's really interesting because you the thing about this is the sustain's right here. Then the sustain is a value that can go up or down. And so you can have the sustain actually fade. Essentially, you could turn it into a release instead. Or you could turn it into an increase that goes all the way back up to the top value. So that's what the sustain is all about. So it fades out now. Or it goes to the top value. Or it comes down to the uh, mid value. So anyways, that's the sustain offset. That's also why it's called offset because it's not necessarily a moving envelope or a graph. It's still a keyboarding graph, but it's an offset because you're changing the value like directly. And then you have your release scale, which is again, how fast it moves through your release. So if you have it down, it takes a freaking long time to get through your release. But if you move it up, oh my bad, I held the key down. Wow, I was thinking straight. So go down and it takes no time to go through release. And up it takes the full time the regular amount of time to get through the release that makes a lot more sense because i'm like my release is not that long i don't understand why it's doing that and that is why so that is what these things do um let's make a really quick because i get suggestions like show us demonstrations of how these things like would be useful so let's make a really quick just kind of attacky pluck type deal using it so we're going to go to our envelope and we're going to just move the point over no you know what we're going to keep it the same but we're going to move it relative over and we're going to change the velocity to be a little less aggressive. And we're going to change things with our offset. And we're going to take it down. We're going to go old school. And we're also going to take our release and bring that guy like way in. And we are going to go to our attack time. And do something like this, just random movements. I know we're moving around in the base, and I want the base to get closer to the attack phase. Than anything. So that's pretty cool. And let's get a cooler thing going. Whatever, that's nice. And then we will turn the sub on. Even though it's already pretty low. And let's go to our timbre. And you know what? I don't want to mess too much with this. Just some small changes. Oh, that's pretty cool. And we're going to leave it all the way on the saw wave. Now let's go over to the... Uh, harmonic randomness. I love this thing. It's like my favorite thing. We're going to change the free running mode to... Uh, we're not going to randomize all the phases. Man, if I had distortion, I'd throw distortion on, but I haven't covered it yet, so I'm not going to use it. Uh, let's go back to our timbre. Uh, 
Just right, just double, just click on this setting to get there. That's pretty interesting. And let's go over here to the sustain offset and let's do something weird. There's not really much of a sustain, so this actually won't affect our sound too much. If we go to the decay though. And the attack scale. Let's make a, just a repetitive art that just goes do 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 and snap setting to one half and we're gonna instead I'm going to do something like this I like that that's pretty cool. Now we're going to, so you get the kind of the whooshy sound, but I want all of the middle notes to be slower on the attack and also a little softer. So anyways, that's pretty cool because you have a, because these guys have, not only are they softer, but they've got a different attack. They swoop in. So it's almost like they're going dun, 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 but they're not. It's just an attack phase deal. We could even make these guys longer, I think. And these ones are louder, so they have a much harder attack. And so not only are they more aggressive, but they're also the root note, which adds emphasis to our arpeggiation. So anyways, that's some, uh, that's a way to create a, a really dynamic art and if you have any questions drop them in the comments any suggestions drop those in the uh, suggestion sections of the comments and have a blessed day